So, my name is Jay Carpenter. I am uh, the founder of Desert Blockchain, which is in Phoenix, Arizona. We have the largest blockchain community in Phoenix, Arizona, or in Arizona, period. And today, I would like to share with you a little um, exercise that we can do that will hopefully demonstrate the difference between centralized voting and decentralized voting. So, we are talking about decentralized voting using zero knowledge proofs. And let's get right into it. So in the SCED for DWebCamp, you can go to this page and I've added the link to the presentation today that you're seeing plus a presentation that I did in 2019 at DWebCamp, the first DWebCamp. And I've also included a link to a video that we did at um, Desert Blockchain Camp uh, in Phoenix that we basically went through this uh, process. And we got into some really great conversation, lasts about an hour or so, we went into a little more depth. So let's talk about three points about voting in general. And those three points are trust, identity and adoption, okay? And let's kind of keep those three points in mind as we're comparing centralized voting with decentralized voting. And I think the topic of trust is, uh, doesn't need a whole lot of elaboration in this day and age around voting. I think we see, uh, you know, cracks in the trust element left and right, not only in uh, our country, but in other countries around the world. So I really appreciate everybody being here today and taking a look at this topic because I consider it to be a really important topic. And if this community, the D-Web community, can make a difference in this realm, I think it would be huge. So I really invite you to consider how might you contribute to boosting the trust in voting and maybe experimenting with decentralization that might include trust, identity, and adoption. But let's start with the standard, which is centralized voting. And why do we use centralized voting? Well, we use it because people, it's a known way to conduct voting, right? People understand it. The systems are already in place. And uh, again, most people understand how it works. So um, here is the Wikipedia page on voting. And you can see that there's some images there on the right. And one fellow's holding up his finger. He's got some ink on it that I'm told lasts for about three days. And that basically shows him as having voted and kind of prevents him from voting again. And there's obviously other elements that are baked into the centralized voting constructs that are designed to ensure the integrity and boost the trust, okay? So, however, even with these items that are designed to boost the trust in centralized voting, we have numerous examples of breakdowns in that trust that have some pretty major consequences to our society and our political system, our economic system, and you know other other critical elements to our society, and uh, you know I picked Bush versus Gore. Uh, that's a little bit dated. You might be able to think of other uh, examples of breakdowns in trust, so and voting, and there's a whole list of uh, controversial elections. So let's go through a simple example of, let's just do a centralized voting example, okay? And in this set of envelopes, we have a ballot that looks exactly like what you're seeing on the uh, slide right now. And we have seven, seven of these envelopes, and I'm gonna ask for some volunteers. Um, who, who would like to basically shuffle these, just to make sure? They're all the same, so it shouldn't make much difference, but um, go ahead and shuffle them. 
And then seven of you will be able to vote using these ballots. Okay, perfect. And I'm sorry, your name? I'm David. David? Great. So, David, if you could continue to help. If seven people would raise your hands for voting. Great. And, and then Cindy, this is my wife, uh, Cindy Carpenter, and if she could pass out some markers. So just, just vote for the North, the North team or the South team. Just put an X in that, and then put, put your ballot, keep your ballot secret because this is a really, really important vote. Um, put your ballot back in your envelope and then turn your envelopes uh, back into David. He's the trusted uh, part of the election here or voting process. No campaigning. That's right. Uh, so, yeah, just go ahead and put your ballot back in the envelope and turn them in. And that's right, a very, very secure ballot. So, do we have, do we have seven ballots, David? Okay, who would like to be a trusted person? We need two people to do this, one from the North team and one from the South team to count the centralized votes. Who would like to do that? It has two people that didn't vote, though. Uh, yeah, let's do people that did not vote. So, one and two, perfect. And are you a North team person or a South team person? South team, perfect, and you're the North team. <clears throat> so go ahead, pull those ballots out, count them on this table, and, and then let us know which team won, North or South. So, and they're marking the X's. Yeah, yeah, you can just set those over there, perfect. And then after we count and tally the centralized voting process, we're going to go in, we're going to do something similar using decentralized voting. So, how are we doing? Yeah, we've got 75 votes counted so far. Did you guys talk to each other? Uh oh. No north? We got a north, okay. That's right. This is like a highly organized vote tally. That's right. Anybody from the north side that wants to influence this? Okay, cool. Okay, so we got six to one south. Big showing, landslide. Okay, cool. Now, before we go on, the people that voted, do you know your vote's up there? Yes. If, <laughs> one, you know your vote is up there. If your vote is up there, do you know how it was counted? Just by the North team, South team, Vote counters. Yeah. Okay. So, so that's right. Okay. So let's just keep that in mind. You did a great job so far with the centralized voting. Now let's repeat the process. And it's okay if you voted on the centralized, if you want to vote for the decentralized. So let's go over to this table. And who has a coin? Because here's what we're going to do. We have two sets of ballots, okay? They are different, but they are, uh, let's say that one set of ballots was created by the north, or now we're doing east-west. One set of ballots was created by the west team. The other set of ballots was created by the east team, and both sides had an opportunity to ensure that the integrity of the ballots was satisfactory, okay? And then someone in the audience should flip a coin, and we're going to either pick the east 
ballots or the West ballots and we'll vote with those. Okay. And the other part of this is we're going to use a public key. And I should be advancing my slides to show you what I'm talking about. So, oh, and this is important. We've all seen the Where's Waldo puzzles, right? Now, this is a critical part of zero knowledge proofs. So, if I gave you one of these Where's Waldo puzzles, let's say everybody had one of these puzzles, and I said, okay, who can tell me the number that's on Waldo's shirt? Who's the first one that can tell me that? And then one of you says, the number on Waldo's shirt is 23. And if I knew that in fact, the number on Waldo's shirt would be 23, I think we would all have a very high degree of confidence that the person who said it's 23 knows where Waldo's at, but they did not disclose the location of Waldo in the puzzle. So that is a very simplified example of a zero knowledge proof. It's knowing something, having a high degree of confidence that it's correct without disclosing all the elements of the item. So knowing that Waldo's wearing a 23 on his shirt gives a high degree of confidence that somebody's found Waldo in the puzzle without revealing exactly where Waldo's at. So I use that as an example of how you can think of a zero knowledge proof, because we're gonna do something similar. Okay, any questions about that? Okay, cool. All right, so let's get back to the, oh, before we do the coin flip, we need to distribute the public key because this is an important part of the process. So everybody in attendance may have a public key. And I'll talk about what the public key is, yes. So this is an image from DWebCamp 2019. And you'll notice as you get a public key that it's got some numbers on each side of the page, okay? And if you wanna look, if you wanna cheat and look at your, your neighbor's public key and make sure that all the public keys are the same, I can assure you that they are. So, and this is a video on zero knowledge proofs, which I think does a great job of explaining it. So here is the image that you've got on your public key. Now on this particular image, you'll notice that all the numbers are zeros, but on your public key, you've got a, an array of numbers, and I can assure you, because I did this by hand, that they are picked randomly, okay? So um, here's the next thing that we're going to do that I should explain. We're gonna pick seven voters and those seven voters are going to get a private key, okay? You're going to get an envelope, whoops. And the envelope is gonna contain two things, which I'm, oh. Done. How about we pick slideshow instead of Share, okay. So you're gonna get a piece of paper that looks like this. It looks like a blank piece of paper, except in, you'll notice there are two holes punched in that, this piece of paper. And we're calling this your private key. Inside the envelope, you're also going to get this, which is your ballot, okay? And it's gonna have, it's gonna look like this. You get the west team on one on the west and the east team on the east. And you'll notice there are two lines. And it's asking you to write a number, and I'm gonna disclose how you get the number in a moment, on one line and a number on the other, and then you total it. 
And it's okay if you use your, your smartphone or whatever to total. It's very important that the total of those two numbers is accurate. Okay? So everyone has a public key. <clears throat> the voters are going to get a private key and a ballot. Now, I ask you to keep the, your ballot secret. Okay? Try not to show even your closest confidant. Because keeping your ballot secret is very important to demonstrate how the trust level increases with the decentralized voting, if all goes well. Okay, so I digress. Let's go back to the uh, flipping of the coin. Would somebody like to pull out a coin? Okay, and heads or tails? Um, well, wait, 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 before you call it, uh, if it's, Heads, we're going to use these ballots. If it's tails, we're going to use these. Okay. Tails? Okay, these. So, and it doesn't matter if this is east or west. Okay. So, once again, let's find somebody else to shuffle the ballots other than David. Somebody else like to shuffle the ballots? Eric, you look trustworthy. <clears throat> so, go ahead and shuffle them a bit. I already shuffled them, but let's make sure they're shuffled. And then we need seven voters for the decentralized. And, and just show them whatever ballots are remaining, let the person pick the ballot, okay? The ballot set. Yeah, perfect. Awesome. Excellent. Oh, and, and you'll also need a marker um, if you don't have a marker, raise your hand. <clears throat> so when, when, you pull, when you pull the contents out of the envelope, you're going to see a private key and a ballot. Take that private key and lay it over the, a public key that you have. So you've got a public key like this. Put the private key over the public key, and that's going to reveal two numbers, okay? And then write those two numbers, one number on this line, one number on this line, total them up, and then carefully just put your ballot, your completed ballot, back in the envelope and pass that in. Keep, you can keep your private key souvenir. It's going to be something you'll remember the rest of your life, obviously. Um, so is that clear? Does anybody have any questions? So put your private key over your public key, reveals two numbers, and then write those two numbers on your ballot and total that up, and then obviously check one of the boxes, either the East team or the West team. And then put your completed ballot back in the white envelope. And then we're going to go back to David. David, go if you'll go cl collect the envelopes. And let's see what happens. This is always the scary part for me. Is this really going to work? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so. Yeah, you can keep those two, right. And everybody's sure that you've done your arithmetic properly. You don't have to seal it. You can just put, put the ballot, complete a ballot in the white envelope. We have 100% voter turnout. All right, awesome. awesome. So go ahead, David. We're going to trust you to uh, pull the ballots out of the envelopes. And then if you would just simply take one of these pieces of tape and uh, tape each ballot to the whiteboard. Let's keep our fingers crossed. OK, so as he's taping these up, I'm going to tell you what is on the ballot. Um, so this is a West team vote. And the total is four, eight, uh, 849. The next one is also a West team vote, 
and the total is 855. And another West. This is a lopsided audience. It is the, I, I would have voted West if I was, part. that's okay, doesn't matter. <clears throat> so. West again, and the total is 850. So here's what we've got for totals. Another West, it might be a unanimous vote here. And that's fine. The outcome of the vote doesn't really matter. We have an outlier. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> we managed to lose one of the votes. We, lo we lost one of the votes? No, no, no. That's... Okay, we got, we got the vote. Cool. Uh, small cowling anomaly. Cool. East. Okay, so we've got two east and... Let's see, five west, is it? Four west? We should have five. Okay, but here's the important part. You notice what we can do right now? We don't need the counting committee. We can all tally the votes. Now, everybody that voted, do you see your votes up here? Can you identify your vote? Can anybody trace one of these votes back to the person who voted? No. Isn't that interesting? Wouldn't that be interesting if we could, A, everybody that's part of the election and not part of the election could verify the results and count the results. And two, if everybody who voted had a very high degree, if not 100% assurance that their vote is part of that total and that it was not changed or manipulated between submission and counting or, or transparency. So which one of these would you say has a higher degree of confidence? That's a great point, because this gets, you just highlighted a critical element of this, which is adoption. Can this be crafted such that people trust it, understand it well enough, and they don't have to go through the complicated math of a zero knowledge proof? What would that look like? Because I think one of the things that's holding this back is understanding what a zero knowledge proof is takes a little bit. And if there's any kind of crack in the trust of the process, it can be exploited by either side or both sides to cast doubt and uncertainty on the vote. So that's a great, great point. So, um, you're welcome to come up and take a look at this, but you can see that not only does it, everybody who voted can identify their vote without, um, without un, uh, revealing that you, that's your vote. You can also see that this is an intact set of votes going from 849 to I think it's, whatever it is, 855, but you can see, yeah, 855. So that's the highest vote, or the lowest vote and the, the highest vote in terms of the number. So hopefully this little demonstration has highlighted the value of what can be created in an adversarial election where both sides do not trust or like each other 
And not only the voters, but everybody who didn't vote is going to be impacted by the results of this vote. So that's it. Hopefully this was interesting. And hopefully this community that's on these grounds for the rest of the week can be some of the innovators in ushering this into reality. Sure, I'm sorry. Do well, that's part of the private key distribution issue. So <clears throat> it's one thing to do this in a group like this where everybody can see one another. Sort of like when there's an auction at Sotheby's or whatever, everybody's pretty much in the same room and you can tell who's voting, who's bidding and so forth. It's another thing to, I'm not saying this is complete, but there are some additional innovations to put in place so that only one private key goes out to one eligible voter. Does that make sense? And you identified um, an area for innovation, yes. That's true. Yeah. yeah. So let, let me backtrack a little bit and, and repeat your question for the recording. Um, so the question was raised, what would prevent somebody from somehow gathering five private keys and submitting five votes that were not, you know, basically from one person? And, and that's what we're talking about. And, and you, David, came up with a great uh, way to handle that in terms of everybody who voted coming up and saying, yes, I see my vote up here. I don't have to point to which one it is, but it's here. And, you know, I can, I can certify that my vote is up here. Now, there's another little issue of somebody changing their vote or being coerced into changing their vote between the time they put it in the envelope and and it comes comes up here, but we won't go into that. Any other questions? Come, go ahead. Yeah, well, somebody else. Can I make a quick comment? Um, just a quick comment. I, I volunteer as a poll worker in my county. Mm -hmm. I highly recommend it. They need more poll workers because traditionally it was a job for elders, and with COVID, a lot of elders can't do it. And I can tell you, every county has systems in place so that one voter gets one ballot. Right? So that you don't wind up with two ballots. And if you wind up with two ballots, only one of them gets counted. And so I would imagine those systems could be adapted to. Right. And even with that system, there's still allegations that uh, ballots were harvested from people like that were incapacitated or whatever. So I've heard that. Um, Mm -hmm. on November 2nd, right? <clears throat> right. And somebody in their household goes and votes on their behalf on November 3rd. Right. But usually that's caught somewhere in the process. Right. So, you know, and it's such a negligible portion that it never seems to impact the outcome right. of a major election. In small areas where you have, like, you know, 10 votes make the difference. So, like, sheriff of, you know, really low-populated county, then you would just hold the real because you'd say, oh, 10% of our ballots were invalidated because mm -hmm. they voted twice, right? So there, there, you know, there are really smart people who for 150, 200 years, but um, there are really smart, amazing people who for years and years and years from many different parties, um, I'm on that one, uh, from many different parties who have figured out systems to make sure that one voter gets one ballot. And I'm, I'm pretty sure that those county um, poll workers, volunteers, Democratic Party reps, Independent Party reps, Republican Party reps could replicate some of those systems there. The comment I made about math, the reason I made it is there's a push in this country now to do more ranked cho choice voting, and people are very confused by that. Sometimes it's called instant runoff, right? So you vote for your top three or your top five out of all the candidates running instead of just voting for your top one. Um, 
So watch that to see how that campaign rolls out nationwide to see how many people can do the math to trust the system still when there's probability and statistics and stuff like that in it. Anything else you see between the, the two approaches that, that comes to your mind after being introduced to this? Um, I think the transporting of ballots is a place where people get nervous. Right, because you tend to put your ballot into a locked box that two people have to certify as locked and then it goes in somebody's car to go somewhere else and then get counted. And so I think what's nice about the decentralized system is you could conceivably count the ballots at the polling places, right, in some kind of public live streamed way. Um, and, and that might actually build some more trust. Cool. <clears throat> Thank you so much. All right, we're out of time and uh, I appreciate your time and attention. And if you have any further comments or ideas or great suggestions like David uh, submitted. Um, we build software for that. We build oh, really? software using zero knowledge proofs to do basically this, but So, it, did you, sorry. Did you see any flaws in this, David? Since you, your oh, it was great. company, Interesting. I hadn't thought of that. I would have, I would have given myself away because I can't spell. So <laughs> that's Jay's ballot. All right. Um, thank you so much. Have a good uh, rest of your D, D webcam. <laughs>